Hello and welcome to Career Ride. I am Nishant and in this video I am going to talk about 20 basic operating system questions and answers that are most important for interview point of view. So without wasting time let's get started now. Alright so let's begin with the first question. What is an operating system? What does it do? The operating system acts as an interface between the user and computer hardware components. It is a system software that provides an environment in which a user can execute programs easily. Every computer system needs an operating system to be able to run programs and interact with the users. Without operating system, it would be just one dumb hardware machine. And the main functions of operating system are memory management, file management, IO management, processor management, device management, security, networking, etc. Coming to the second one, what are the most popular operating system at present? Operating system has evolved from slow and expensive system to fast, powerful and affordable in the modern world. And the most popular operating system at present are Android, Windows and iOS. The Android operating system is the world most used mobile operating system with over 41% of global market share. Android operating system is developed by Google for smartphones and tablets. It is free and open source software. Windows is the second most used operating system which accounts for 32% of global market share. Windows is a proprietary operating system that is owned by Microsoft. Windows currently dominates the personal computers market which includes desktops and laptops. Coming to iOS, iOS is the operating system of one of the most popular smartphones known as iPhone. It is a proprietary mobile operating system that is developed and owned by Apple. It accounts for over 16% of global market share. Alright, so coming to the third question. What are the main functions of an operating system? And the main functions of an operating system are It provides the interface for the user to interact with the computer components where the user would give commands to the operating system and the operating system would in turn instruct the hardware components to execute the command and perform a specific task. It organizes and coordinates the processing time of the various processes and programs running simultaneously for smooth execution. It deals with memory management which allocates and deallocates memory space to programs in need of memory. It also supervises scheduling of tasks and jobs to different resources. It also deals with various file activities such as organization of files, storage, retrieval of files, naming, sharing and protection of files. It also maintains security of the system and access rights of the user. Coming to the next question, what is a kernel? What are the different types of kernels? A kernel is a program that is a core of operating system. It is the most important part of an operating system that can be thought as a program that controls all other programs in the system. It facilitates the interaction between hardware and software components and basically manages operations of memory and CPU time. It is also responsible for low level tasks such as disk management, memory management, process management etc. A kernel is one of the first program that is loaded when starting up a computer and remains in the system memory until the computer is shut down. You know there are various types of kernel such as monolithic kernel, micro kernel, hybrid kernel, exo kernel and nano kernel. Now let's discuss what is the difference between monolithics and micro kernel. A monolithic kernel is a kernel where the user services and kernel services share the same memory space. As a result, the execution of process is faster in monolithic kernel. As there is no separate memory space for user and kernel, the size of the kernel is increased and that increases the size of operating system overall. When any of the service fails, 
it leads to an entire service failure in case of monolithics kernel. And when a new service is added, the entire OS needs to be modified. The Linux kernel is an example of monolithics kernel. In a microkernel, the user services are kept in user address space and kernel services are kept under kernel address space. As a result, it reduces the size of kernel and thus microkernel is smaller in size. Since the user service share a different memory space with the kernel, this causes the operation of the kernel to be slower as compared to monolithic kernels. Microkernel is easily extendable. It doesn't require any modification in kernel space if a new service is added to user address space. Microkernels are very uncommon. Minix and Symbian are the examples of microkernel. Coming to the next question, what are device drivers? A device driver is a piece of software that allows the kernel of the operating system to communicate with different hardware in the system. It facilitates the operation of the kernel. The kernel doesn't have to know the working details of the hardware, but can simply call the device driver of that particular hardware when needed its operations. Now let us understand what is paging. Paging is a memory management scheme in which data is stored to and retrieved from the secondary storage for use in the main memory. The part of secondary storage that is used for paging is known as virtual memory. In paging, a process is divided into fixed size continuous block known as pages and is stored on secondary storage. A page is the smallest unit of data for memory management used in virtual memory and the main memory is also divided into fixed size continuous blocks known as frames. Pages from the secondary storage are mapped into frames in the main memory and frames must be kept of same size as the page in order to have maximum utilization of memory. This process of transferring of pages between main memory and virtual memory is referred to as paging in Windows OS or swapping in Linux. Now coming to the next question, what is a process in operating system? In operating system, a process is a program in execution. For example, when we write our program in C, we save, compile and run it. And the moment we run it, it is transferred to the main memory and becomes a process. When a process executes, it passes through many different stages like start, ready, running, waiting, and terminated state. Now coming to the next question, what are the various attributes associated with a process? Operating system maintains a process control block or PCB. PCB is nothing but a data structure that stores information about a process. There are various attributes stored in PCB and they are process ID, process state, priority, process counter, CPU registers, list of open files, and list of open devices. Now let us understand each of them. Process ID. It is a unique identifier assigned by the operating system. Process state. This represents the current state of the process such as ready, running, etc. Priority. Each process has its own priority and the one which higher priority gets the CPU first. Program counter. Program counter stores the address of the last instruction of the process when the process was suspended. This will help the CPU to unknow the exact address when resuming the process. CPU register. Each process has its own set of CPU registers which are used to hold the data during the execution of a process. List of open files. During execution, there are some files that are needed by the process that needs to be present in the main memory. OS maintains those open files. List of open devices. OS also maintains list of all the devices that are open during the execution of a process. Now coming to the next question, what is a thread? 
a thread is the smallest unit of execution within a process a process can have multiple threads a thread is also called as a lightweight process it breaks up a task into smaller units that can be executed concurrently and thus provide concurrency within a process it exists within a process and uses process resources such as code data and files since a thread is lightweight as compared to a process it has to improve the execution performance by running in parallel with other threads and just like a process each thread has its own attributes such as thread id program counter register set and a stack threads announces the throughput of the system because when a process is split into threads the function of each thread is considered as one job and then the number of jobs done in unit time increases in a multi processor environment threads can be distributed over a series of processes and can run in parallel on different processes now let us understand what is a deadlock a deadlock is a situation when two processes are waiting for each other to complete in order to start their operation this happens when first process is holding a resource and waiting for another resource that is currently being held by the second process and the second process is waiting for the resource being held by the first process and this will cause them to wait for ever and be in the state of deadlock coming to the next question what are the necessary conditions that can lead to a deadlock situation in a system there are four different conditions that result in deadlock and they are mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption and circular wait now let us understand each conditions mutual exclusion a resource cannot be shared between two processes only one process can use a particular resource at a time hold and wait a process is holding at least one resource and waiting for another resources no preemption a resource cannot be taken from a process unless the process releases the resource and the last one is circular wait a group of processes are waiting for each other to release the resource and no one is releasing their own resource coming to the next question what is a banker's algorithm banker's algorithm is a deadlock avoidance algorithm it manages resources allocation it is also called as deadlock detection algorithm it is named as banker's algorithm because the banks use the same technique to allocate money and provide loans to their customers so that ne they never run out of money banker's algorithm checks the three things before allocation of resources and they are how many maximum resources can be requested by each process how many resources each process currently hold how many resources are currently available or not allocated to any process in the system coming to the next question what is a virtual memory virtual memory is a storage allocation scheme where the secondary storage such as a hard drive can be used as a main memory by the system this gives the illusion of having a big main memory it allows users to run large application with less real ram this process of using virtual memory is done automatically by the os when a new application is to be loaded on the ram and there is no sufficient space the system searches for application on the ram that are in dormant stage and copies the same onto the hard disk in this way the system frees up space on the ram and allows new application to be loaded on the ram now what is demand paging demand paging is a paging technique used in virtual memory system where the pages that are stored in the secondary storage are retrieved only when demanded by the cpu it is also known as lazy swapper now coming to the next one what is thrashing 
Thrashing is the state where the CPU spends most of its time swapping pages between the main memory and virtual memory, rather than doing productive work such as executing the instructions. By evaluating the level of CPU utilization, a system can detect thrashing and it occurs when the number of pages exceeds the number of frames in the memory, which leads to CPU to address too many page faults and be in a constant state of paging. Now what is this page fault? Page fault occurs when the page referenced by the CPU is not found in the main memory and has to be fetched from the secondary storage. Page fault notify the operating system that it must retrieve the pages from the virtual memory in order to continue the execution. Alright, so let's talk about what is the difference between segmentation and paging. Segmentation works in a similar manner as paging. It is a memory management technique that divides the main memory into segments of various size. Now let's talk about difference between them. In paging, the size of the page is fixed, whereas in segmentation, the size of a segment is not fixed. In paging, procedures and data cannot be separated, whereas procedure and data can be separated in segmentation. Paging is faster. Segmentation is slower as compared to paging. The size of page is determined by the CPU and available memory, whereas the size of segment is determined by the user. Ok, what are the different states of a process? A process goes through various states during execution and they are new, ready, running, wait and terminate. Now let's talk about various states and the first one is new. This is the state when a program is picked up by the operating system into the main memory. Ready. In the ready state, the process is waiting for the processor to be assigned for it to run. Running. A process is set to be in running state when it is being executed by the CPU. Wait. If a process waits for a certain resource or waits for the input from the user, it is set to be in wait state and meanwhile the CPU picks up another process. Terminate. When a process finishes its execution, it is said to be in termination stage. And in this state, the process is removed from the main memory. And the last question is, what is a scheduling algorithm? Name the different types of scheduling algorithm. A scheduling algorithm is an algorithm which intends to improve efficiency by reducing the waiting time to a minimum while allocating resources to various competing tasks. There are various types of scheduling algorithm such as first come first serve, priority scheduling, round robin scheduling, multi-level queue scheduling, shortest remaining time and shortest job first.